Hello, welcome to this series of videos on L'Hopital's Rule. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. Let's get started. L'Hopital's Rule is a technique that's used to help you evaluate limits of an indeterminate form. If you try to evaluate your limit and you end up with a fraction that looks like 0 over 0, that's not an actual number. It's indeterminate. And so L'Hopital's rule is built to handle that. I have a fraction f of x over g of x, and both of the numerator and the denominator are headed to 0 as x is headed to a. So then there's no such thing as 0 over 0. It's indeterminate. I prefer to put air quotes around it because I just don't feel right writing that down. And so well, someone once told you zero divided by anything, it should be zero. But then someone once told you, you're not allowed to divide by zero. Then someone once told you, if you divide the same thing, if you, if you divide something by itself, it's a one. So it's indeterminate. L'Hopital's rule comes in to help you perhaps find the value of this limit. Or perhaps the numerator and denominator are both headed to infinity as x toward, heads towards a. And a can even be infinity itself or minus infinity. And so L'Hopital's rule is built exactly for these two cases. 0 over 0 indeterminate form, infinity over infinity indeterminate form, plus or minus. And here's what it says. It says the following. The limit that you're trying to find, if... Uh, you can trade in that limit for another limit, okay? Provided that this new limit exists. The new limit that you trade it in for is the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. L'Hopital's rule says that if the limit on the that you're trading in for exists, you know, or even if it's infinity or negative infinity, if it exists, then you could do this. And so it's not a quotient rule. Please don't get it confused. It is the numerator derivative divided by the denominator derivative. Okay. Now let's take a look at example. My first example is x goes to 1. And my numerator is x to the fifth minus 1. My denominator is x to the ninth minus 1. Whenever someone gives you a limit, you try to evaluate it. Plug in the number. Uh, division by 0 in the denominator gives you some caution. But the numerator also is 0. This is of the form 0 over 0. L'Hopital's rule says, let's do a different limit instead. Let's take the derivative of the numerator. 5x fourth. Let's take the derivative of the denominator. 9x eighth. Let's take that limit instead as x goes to 1. I like to announce when I execute L'Hopital's rule by putting L apostrophe H above the equal sign. Well, now you try to plug a 1 in, and you're going to get 5 ninths. You did it. You executed your first L'Hopital rule question. Good job. Now, the difficulty level there was very low, so let's ramp it up a little bit. Example number two, we have trig. X is headed to zero. Sine of 4x divided by tangent of 5x. Try to plug a zero in. Denominator gives you zero. It gives you a second of pause. Tangent of zero, zero. The numerator gives you zero. So then, perhaps, L'Hopital rule will come in to help you. So, we trade this limit in. What is the derivative of the sine of 4x? The cosine of 4x times 4. What is the derivative of the tangent of 5x? The secant squared of 5x times 5. So now you try to evaluate this limit. We've executed L'Hopital's rule. It says that those two limits are the same. The cosine of 0 is a 1. 
The secant of zero is also a one. The answer to this limit is four fifths. You've executed your second L'Hopital rule example. A little higher level of difficulty, but not much going on here. Let's turn the screws a little more. Now x is going towards zero. And we have numerator is x. Denominator is the arctan of 8x. Numerator is definitely headed to zero. The arctan of zero, also zero. L'Hopital's rule. So the denominator derivative is quite complicated. Numerator derivative, it's a one. So if you have arctan of a different of a, of a function, then the derivative of that is 1 over 1 plus that function squared. And when that function is more than just an x, the chain rule comes in and says, multiply by the derivative of that function. So you have 1 over 1 plus the quantity of 8x squared, and then it's times an 8. All right, the quantity of 8x squared, that's just 64x squared. Our denominator is 8 over 1 plus 64x squared, which can be rewritten as 1 plus 64 8, uh, x squared on top of 8, since it's 1 over that. x goes to 0, numerator goes to 1. The, the result of this limit is 1 eighth. Very good. Well, we have executed three limits at 0, or one limit at 1, and then two limits at 0. They are all of the format of 0 over 0, and they weren't that bad. Good job. Um, let's try one more. Let's try one more. Limit as x goes to infinity. The natural log of x quantity is squared. That's not the natural log of x squared. Right? It's the natural log of x quantity that's squared. So L, uh, ln of a large number is eventually large. It takes a long time to get large. Uh, when you square it, it's going to get larger. So the numerator is headed to infinity, and of course the denominator is also headed to infinity. This is our first example of this particular indeterminate form. L'Hopital's rule come in and, comes in and says, trade that limit in for another limit. Take the derivative of the numerator. That's the hard part. It's, it's a function who is squared. Power rule, bring down the 2, take that function to the 1. Chain rule, multiply by the derivative of that function. Bring down the 2, take log x to the 1, this is log x, log x is derivative, or natural log x is derivative, is 1 over x. So, denominator derivative is a 1. Well, one step to simplify this would be to write the uh, x in the denominator. So, our new limit is going to look like 2 natural log of x on top of x. And x is still going to infinity. And we are still in the same format, infinity over infinity. But that's okay. This is our first example of L'Hopital's rule requiring more than one iteration. And so we do it again. We trade this limit in for the derivative of the numerator, 2 over x. Divided by the derivative of the denominator, 1 what happens to 2 over x as x goes to infinity? 2 divided into infinitely many pieces is going to go to 0. That's the value of your limit. All right, we did four examples. We, we talked about what the method is, and we did four examples. That's great. Let's uh, stop the video here. We'll come back and we'll look at some more difficult examples. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Happy to help you through this calculus journey. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Comment down below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, take care.